Hey everybody! Today I am going to show you how you can turn one of these popcorn cans into a perfect ottoman. And this ottoman is going to be great for me in my RV, but I think it's actually going to be really great for you too around the campfire, while camping, or maybe even at home. All right, so I actually really like this popcorn can a lot. I, I think the snowmen are so cute, but I did buy it specifically to repurpose it. And I actually got this for 25 cents at the thrift store. They have a bin with all kinds of tins and I just chose the biggest tin <laughs> and got it for 25 cents. So I always have been um, earmarking this to repurpose it, although I will miss the cute little snowman. So I have a problem sitting in my RV um, on the couch because the cushions are so deep, my feet won't hit the floor and I need some sort of ottoman, but actually putting in more furniture into a small space is, um, you know, just not a great idea and kind of problematic. So my idea is to turn this into an ottoman, plus I get extra storage inside. And if you know anything about camping and RVing, then you know that storage is always at a premium. And in all honesty, at home too. Um, so I'm gonna be able to put anything in here like um, maybe camp, um, s'mores making supplies, toilet paper, shoes, clothing, camping gear, all kinds of stuff. So we seem to have a teal theme going on with our RV this year. So I am going to be using this Fusion All-in-One Paint and Primer, and this is gonna be Satin Peacock Blue. So here's the can with just one coat of paint. It looks pretty good. I guess that's because there was a primer in it. Um, I did miss some tape marks that I did not see. So just go through your tin and make sure that there's nothing on there that you're gonna be painting over. I'm gonna be adding this stencil. I will put a link to that stencil in the description below. All right, and then you're gonna to wanna to use some painter's tape to attach that stencil so that it stays uh, straight while you're painting. And let's go ahead and start painting. I'm just gonna be using some acrylic paint and doing it that way. I bought some sponge brushes at the Dollar Tree and the trick is to have very little paint on this, almost to the point where it's dry, and then come in and just kind of dab it because if there's too much paint on that brush, it's just gonna like kind of pool up underneath the stencil and just not look good and smear. So it's just better to have a very thin layer and go over it a few times rather than a thick layer, do it once and then have to go back in and, and you know, fix it. So when putting paint on the sponge, um, I use a paper plate. I put some on there and literally you just need a little bit and then just dab it. Kind of see how it's like still leaving those marks that's not what you want on your brush. You want it to dab to where there's almost nothing. And that's the point where you start putting it on the stencil. And now it's time to take off the stencil. You wanna do this while it's wet. Sounds like it wouldn't be the greatest idea, but actually it's better to take it off wet than dry because it might really mess up if you take it off while it's dry. Oh, yay! <laughs> I honestly was really, really hoping that this would be turning out okay. Oh, yay! Seriously, yay! <laughs> oh, look how nice it looks. Yay! Y'all, I am so seriously ecstatic that it looks this good. Yay! So it's time to make the top for the ottoman. And I have some of this National Park fabric. It's like a topography fabric. It looks kind of like the map. So I think that's going to look really good with this uh, paint color. I'll put a link to that shop in the description below because they have a lot of cool national park fabrics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the width of this top and ours, let's say roughly 10 inches. I always like to measure big because then you can definitely cut down. And so what I want is to have kind of like the fabric like this and then come under and I'm going to stuff that with stuffing and you don't have to use a sewing machine. So bear with me. So I've got 10 inches. So I want to actually double that so that it will come in underneath itself, if you know what I mean. And then I'm just going to stuff that. 
Um, and then I wanna leave probably at least an inch or two to make it the thickness that I want. Actually, two inches is probably gonna be a little bit too high. So maybe like an inch or two, but I'll just go ahead and measure with the two just to be sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 10 inches. I'm gonna double that so that it comes in underneath itself to create like a pouch. So I'm at 20 inches there. And then I'll probably add, I would say like an inch of thickness um, on each side. So that's gonna be about 22 inches in diameter that I am going to need to cut this fabric to. And I will show you what that looks like. So a really easy way to do this measurement is just to put the can top on the fabric. I put it um, on the wrong side. And so this would be 10 inches. According to the measurements that I told you before, we wanted 22 inches in total. I'm subtracting the 10 from the 22, which would leave 12 inches extra. And I could just do six inches on either side, just like make a mark six inches all the way around. And that would give you a diameter of six plus 10 plus six, which would be the 22. Now I just had um, drapes that I made and I measured too small and I have an issue. So I always say measure big and then you can just, um, kind of cut away what you don't need. So I'm actually gonna end up making mine seven inches on the outside. I might need to go back in and cut it, but I could actually just tuck it in underneath and it won't be a problem. So I'm just gonna take the tape measure and go around and mark seven inches all the way around in a circle and cut that out. So if you're new to cutting out patterns and making them your own, I just did tiny little marks with a Sharpie and I'll just follow them by cutting with my scissors like I have over here. But you can just like trace um, and make a line so that you can follow it if that would make you feel more comfortable doing that. And I just use a Sharpie rather than anything fancy because this is gonna be underneath, I'm not gonna see it, so no problem. Okay, and before you do the final touches, you always want to iron your fabric if it has creases like this, you don't, I mean, obviously once it's stuffed, you can't be doing that. So you really need to get all of the creases out before you start doing the final touches on any project. Okay, so now I am doing a really big basting stitch and this is gonna be to kind of like pull it tight to, I'm trying to do this with one hand, but like I'll be able to cinch it and create that poof on top. So you just take a needle and thread and just go up and down um, make really, really big stitches. All right, now that I have my really big basting stitch, and by the way, you can do this closer to the edge of the fabric than I did. I have a pretty big seam. I'm going to start just gently pulling on that thread. Keep in mind, don't knot it and thread it um, when you're done. So you wanna have it loose so you can kind of just pull like this. And as you can see, it's making like a circular kind of pouch, so to speak. And I am going to stuff this with stuffing and just kind of make it the size that I want in order to fit on the top of this. And then All right, so I finally got the topper done. I have to say, this is what it looks like underneath. This is what I was going for. Um, my dimensions were just off. So what I ended up cutting it down to was 19 inches in diameter. And then I did that basting stitch probably about an inch um, from the edge and I stuffed it with the stuffing. Now, if I just put it on top, you can see it looks pretty poofy, but I'm gonna leave it like that because over time with you know the weight of your feet or sitting on it, it's gonna flatten out a little bit and I think that's gonna look really good just like that. So I now I'm gonna hot glue it down. I'm just gonna take hot glue all the way around, pop it on there, and uh, yeah, it's complete. I love using this sit-upon ottoman by the campfire. It's so nice to kick your feet up and relax. And it also works perfectly to put in the RV because it just tucks in underneath the table dinette.